Welcome to the International Conference on Management, Education, and Social Science, July 20, 2020. Thank you so much for the participant who already attend the conference today. Right now, we have uh, more than 520 registered participants from 27 countries. And then we also have uh, four presenters Actually, five presenters that will present their paper for today conferences. And then hopefully that this conference also can bring more insight, benefits uh, in terms of the knowledge sharings and also the encouragement of the research to all the scholars and to all the participants who attend the conference today. Thank you. And once again, welcome to the all participants. Good mornings to all of you. Okay. Because this is already the times, I will start the conferences. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Santi. Nice to meet you all. I am the founder and also the director of the Global Network and Operation of the Research Synergy Foundations. So once again, welcome to the International Conference on Management, Education and Social Science 2020. Next slide, please. the International Conference on Management Education. The International Conference on Management Education and Social Science, or MESS, held by the Research Synergy Foundations. And this conference is conducted virtuals on July, July 20, 2020. So the aim of the conference is to bring together leading academicians, researchers, and also scholars to exchange and share their experience and research result on all aspects of the management, education, and social science. The MESS Conference 2020 International Conference show up as cutting-edge social research platforms together presentations and discussion of recent achievement by leading researchers in academic research. So welcome participants from Indonesia, Pakistan, Philippines, Myanmar, Morocco, China, Cameroon, Malaysia, India, Cambodia, Nigeria, Kosovo, Japan, Uzbekistan, Oman, Yemen, Bangladesh, Bulgaria, Egypt, USA, Sri Lanka, Ghana, Thailand, Tunisia, Afghanistan, Tanzania, and Burkina Faso. Thank you so much for registering this virtual conference today. Hopefully, not only for the presenters, but we also the attendee of today's conference can get a benefit of uh, for this knowledge uh, sharing forum. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, before we start to the presentation and also the keynote speech sessions, I would like to give some introduction regarding how this virtual conference will go. So the materials of the presenters, which is the conference paper of each presenters can be seen and download it at this link. So you can uh, directly type uh, these links to your browsers and then you can see the full paper of the presenters that will present the paper for today, the conferences. And also in abstract, the proceeding book also will be sent in the chat room by the admin. So you can also see the glimpse of the research paper uh, in a short way. And then Next, regarding the video and also the audio, all participants are required to mute their audio and the host has every right to mute any participants audio and remove who are deemed disruptive without warning. And regarding the question and answer, certificate and others, the question and answer can only be asked via Zoom chat room and session chair will manage as time available. So please write your questions and the name of presenter that should answer your questions. But before that, we also, when we send the invitation link of today conferences, we also uh, already send the GPOM link that you can also type your question there. But uh, in these uh, sessions, we encourage you to type the, the, the questions in the chat rooms. Okay, and then this also important, the e-certificate will be provided 
to register email after the sessions. So it will be starting for, from tomorrow. For the participants uh, or the attendee or the presenters who only complete and involve and actively involve in presenting the paper or asking the question or give feedback in the sessions. Because we believe that uh, the, the presenters and also the attendee must have the mutual benefit in terms of these scientific forums. So the e-certificate for the attendee or the uh, audience only be uh, only will be sent to your registered email if you are asking a questions or giving feedback during the sessions to the presenters or the or the keynote speakers. Okay, next please. Yeah, so this is the overall agenda for today conferences and after this will come address we will have some short introduction by me regarding the global research ecosystems and then we have some group photos and then we also have the keynote speaker sessions which will be delivered by the assistant professor engineer dr muhammad mustaba asad he is the head of educational technology and also the tvet research group from sukur iba university and then we also will have the main the main uh, the main area which is the online presentation session for the present for the presenters and then we also have open research discussion sessions and we also have uh, the participant testimonial in order to encourage other scholars to join our scientific forums and last one is the closing and also the post conference informations okay next slide please yeah so here we go so we already uh, start this a morning with the good uh, with the good with the good atmosphere with the good ambience that in terms of the research that we need to know that there are a lot of things that we can do and we can contribute not only to our society but also to our community and also to our country as a nations because we believe that the nation the development of the nation is starting which is good with is if it based on the research Okay, so we go to the introduction of the Global Research Ecosystem by the Research Synergy Foundations uh, by me, Santi Ramawati. So once again, nice to meet you all. And in this opportunity also, we would like also to welcome all of you who already attend this conference to be part of these ecosystems in order to get more benefits. Next slide, please. Yeah, so actually, what is the Research Synergy Foundation? Maybe there are some of you that already joined our previous scientific forum, whether it is in a form of the international conference or the online learning forum, or maybe another, another, uh, an, another, another program that we already held in order to do the research enhancement program. So the Research Synergy Foundations is a digital social enterprise platform that focuses on developing research ecosystem towards outstanding global scholars. And we build collaborative networks among researchers, lecturers, scholars, and also practitioners globally for the realization of the knowledge accelerations. So why actually Research Synergy Foundations? Because we do really understand that many researchers worldwide may have limited access to opportunity, knowledge sharing medium, and also technology. They may, also have limited, they may also have limited access to literatures. Therefore, writing and publishing become one of the main issues they need to overcome. They may receive little or no feedback on their writing, thus impeding their growth as the global scholars. And also publishing in high impact journals become a huge challenge and experience is sometimes often discouraging. Therefore, we research synergy foundations provide a comprehensive, and also integrated research ecosystem that will facilitate the process and enable you to contribute more to academics and also society. So what is the comprehensive and integrated research ecosystem? So we go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so this is how we work. This is the integrative research ecosystem that we have. Actually, in RSF, our Research Synergy Foundation, we have four support systems that is uh, that, that are interacting each others because 
uh, because each of the super system have their own rules. So first is the scholar vein. The scholar vein is the integrated conference operating system, which covering the pre, during, and post process of the conference. And then it's also include the online submission systems, the global marketing system, and also the publication systems. And this scholar vein is already tested and also reliable because it's already served more than 100 international conference in more than 15 countries with more than 2,500 members from 22 representative countries. So by using this scholar vein, it will help your organizations in managing the conferences in effective and efficient way. If you want to know more about the scholar vein, please go to the website scholarvein.com. Okay, and the next one is the Research Synergy Institute. The Research Synergy Institute is the enhancement and learning platforms for scholars, researchers, professionals, and also in RSI also, we, su we supporting the services to increase the outdoor capacity. Because we know that there are gaps between the outdoor capacity and also the editor or the journal requirements. Because one of the stakeholder that RSF has also the uh, publish and also the journals, so we know the requirement. So in order to minimize those gap between the author, we are bring some uh, several scheme to enhance that, starting from the workshop, coaching, seminar, and etc. And right now, actually, we have we have more than 20, 25 under 30 university. So this data is actually in a 2019. Now the number is already uh, growing up. So later on, we will also keep update on you regarding about the numbers of our research ecosystems. Okay, and next one is the RSF Press. And RSF Press is the integrated international journal system, which is dedicated to the university or institution that wants to have their international journals and then wants to get a better indexation gradually starting from the 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 google scholars the doig the copernicus until the target if we a partnership with the university if we submitted the journals to be indexed in the scopus or the web of science and also the rsf press is our scientific publishing platform like today conference paper of the presenters also published by the rsf press which is already have the DOI number and also indexed it in the Google Scholars. And right now, under the RSF under the RSF Press, we have currently more than seven, more than seven journal collaboration. And in, in the 2000, 2021, it will be up to 10 uh, journals that is under the RSF Press. And then we also uh, affiliated with the Taylor and Francis as the main distributor that have the access and also the coverage uh, to more than a thousand Scopus or was indexed international journals by Taylor and Francis Group. And then the last one is the important one also, the reviewer track. The reviewer track is the hub for worldwide reviewers. This is the gatekeeper for reviewers to emphasize the ethical process because in this ecosystem, our main focus is in the research and if we talk about the research, we we'll talk about the scientific process, we we'll talk about the ethical guidelines that we need to comply. And this is the important and also the essential. So that's why we also have um, a reviewer from our members and also we open for reviewers also. Right now, in this opportunity, I would like also to welcome and invite you to be one of our reviewers and then join this reviewer track as a platform that can connecting you as the as the reviewers to do the review not only in the a conference paper but also in the journals and there are also many benefits that you can get as the reviewer in the reviewer track in terms of financial and also non-financial things like you can be invited as one of our keynote speaker in in any conferences that we will have of course with some criteria and then you can also get benefit like the free international conference and also the free change of the publications opportunity if you also perform well as the reviewer so the reviewer will be a very um prestigious as a very prestigious one uh, for you if you want to contribute as the scholar or the researchers so please go through the website reviewertrack.com 
to uh, to be uh, sign sign up to have an account in a reviewer and be the part of our research ecosystem where you can also sharpen your research skill and scientific skill and the most important things also giving encouragements to others okay next slide please yeah and if you talk about the global scholars actually in rsf we also have the steps that you uh, can 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 do as an individuals or even as an institutions in order to involve or in order to be a global scholar which is globally recognized like our expert like our keynote speakers and our session chairs and etc so the first one is you have to participate in rsf scientific forum why because this through through participating in this rsf scientific forum you will get to know what rsf done and how is rsf commitments to the to the uh, scientific community because our international conference is aimed to create a tipping point or the leverage of the opportunity in terms of the research collaborations and also the mutual promotion that can give you benefit as an individual or institutions and also we can make a synergy among other researchers from other countries because our member is more than 70 uh, coming from more than 72 countries and our strength is we emphasize on this scientific process, starting from the pre the registration, the review, until it's the post conference regarding the publications with the support of course with the technology or the IT systems. And then the second one is you have to practice because as we know that practice makes perfect. And if we talk about your, uh, uh, career, your, your career in, in research or in scholars that Yes, you need to publish your research, you need to publish your work, otherwise you perish. So please train yourself along with our team and then to make a mesmerizing manuscript that makes the editor interested because this is also needs some tips and tricks how to make the editor interested in our papers. So you can also practice by, by uh, sending your paper in the conferences to go through the journal publications or even releasing your book chapters in certain certain topics of your expertise with the RSF press and also the research writing collaborations. So by those, doing those combinations, it will forge your academic skills. And then the last one is you have to perform your contributions because what makes us as a good academician or scientist and what can we give back to the society? Because we already blessed with all the opportunity, access and achievement that we got. So it's time to contribute more by doing and involving in real actions to make the world better. And together, you and also the RSF can make a more impactful programs that can minimize the gap that accelerate the knowledge among countries. So the program could be various. It depends on the, it depends on the need of your organization also, or it depends on the need uh, of you as the individuals that wants to commit to perform your, public, to perform your contributions. So we are very open on the partnerships program and also the collaboration programs. Yeah, by, by doing this, by doing this, so you already in the right path, if we go like the career path, so you are already in the right path to be a global scholars. And more information, you can go through our official website, which is the research synergy.org. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah. So this is our upcoming international conference, one of our scientific uh, forum that we held regularly. So the nearest one is will be conducted in the next month in 25 August. And then the next one we can see this from September, October until December. Until December is we also already have. And then in the scientific forum for 2000, uh, 21 also will be launch, launching uh, very soon. So please uh, be, be uh, keep update with us through our website or through our Facebook Research Synergy. So we will update our program. We'll update our program there. And then you can also click, uh, you can also browse the detailed information of each uh, this conference through their individual websites because each conference have their own a website so you can go through the uh, official website of the research synergy 
and then there will be a menu like the upcoming event and you can click that and there's there are a lot of uh, scientific forum that you can that you can participate both as the presenter who will present their paper and then get uh, the publication opportunity in the good journals or as the attendee or the audience because we also uh, open we always open for the attendee who will um, participate in our conferences but usually it's one week before the conferences so it's only limited okay and you can uh, please uh, go through this website and then you can you can uh, and then you can uh, browse more information regarding the the field of research whether it is suitable with you or not and something like that and then you can also inform your colleague okay okay so i think uh, for the introduction of the global research ecosystem is already done so we will continue to our agenda which is the group photos yeah so admin can stop the yeah the share screen and then we go to the just wait a minute i also will take this yeah okay yes all right okay so everyone already stand by i will count one to three and because there will be four rooms in these uh today conferences so please make sure you also uh, already get tidy up okay for the room one yeah everyone just wait a minute okay one admin also be ready one two three okay thank you yeah yes okay and then we go to the room number two the room number two the room number two okay one two three okay oh this one is room number three Room number two, I will repeat again. Room number two, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then room number three. Okay. Yeah, and then the last one, room number four. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much everyone for attending this conference today. Okay, admin can start share the screen again. Next agenda is, of course, the keynote speaker sessions. Now already being with us, the assistant professor engineer, Dr. Muhammad Mujtaba Asad. Welcome, Prof. Okay, before, before he start delivering the speech, I would like to read a brief about uh, his uh, biography or his profiles. Okay, so the Dr. Muhammad Mujtaba Asad has national and international working experience of more than 12 years at industrial and educational sectors in the domain of educational technologies, work and product-based education and TVET. Currently, he is serving as an assistant professor and head of educational technology and TVT research at Sukur Iba University, Pakistan. Dr. Mustaba has published more than 70 research articles in reputed international journals and conferences worldwide. Also, two books related to the observational skills of competent educators under the CS Publishing House USA is in his publication credit. And Dr. Mustaba has supervised eight PhD and MS research students so far. He has also received several awards in international research and development completions in Malaysia, Korea, Saudi Arabia, and UAE on his commercialized projects. He is also serving as an editorial board member to 15 reputed and indexed international journals. Dr. Mustaba also holds several international copyrights and has filled one patent under the title of Hasbro Expert 1.0 for drilling operations. 
So he also awarded as an honorary lifetime membership as an international ambassador by University Tun Hussein on Malaysia based on his academic achievement and community service. So this is a very outstanding achievement for the uh, Professor Mustaba Asad. So in this opportunity, we are very grateful to have you, Prof. Okay, so the next slide, please. Yeah, and he will be delivered the keynote speech sessions. And this is a very current, current research, yeah? A very current research with the title, the VR Based Educational Technology 4.0 for Oil and Gas Drilling Industry. So, Professor Mustaba, are you with me? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Shanti and RSF, RSI for inviting me again to International Conference on Management, Education and Social Sciences. So uh, as you already introduced me, so uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So I think uh, uh, the topic which I have selected for delivering the speech or having a, some interactive session on uh, a very current and needful topic, which is related to IR 4.0. And uh, currently we are also facing the situation which is in, in this uh, situation of pandemic COVID-19. So we are also moving towards the further development uh, in terms of uh, technological advancements. So uh, the topic which I have selected, it's covering also the domain of education and also the management part in terms of safety and health. So the topic uh, which we are going to, uh, which I'm going to share with you and you will, I will, I hope that you will also get some new information and knowledge. That is actually a framework which is based on the development of virtual reality based uh, uh, educational technology 4.0 for safety and health of uh, drilling workforce at oil and gas industries. So next slide, please. Okay, so uh, as we all know that the oil and gas industry is considered as uh, one of the very complex and, and challenging uh, industry in, in the sector of production, in fact of manufacturing some new petrochemical products and and such uh, petrochemical uh, materials. So therefore, the high fatality rate uh, among oil and gas drilling crew has been reported from more than decades. So we are actually facing these issues related to safety and health. It's, uh, it's, they are not new. Even the oil and gas industry is spending a lot of money having uh, those particular safety and health uh, preventive strategies to overcome accident prevention and, and those all uh, like uh, situations in which the human can get affected to this, uh, also their health and their safety. So uh, there are several things which the previous research studies also indicated and also our, uh, uh, what we have also identified through our literature review and my students in our research group also working uh, in this project to find out that what are those challenges and how we can use technology to improve and enhance the festival training uh, part of uh, the drilling crew prior to going to the actual field in the drilling sites. So the first thing that we have highlighted through literature review also indicated by one researcher, which is Vanand 2019, indicated that there is a lack of health and safety awareness among the drilling crew during drilling process. So that was one of the uh, issue which has been highlighted uh, in this uh, specific domain of safety and health in terms of uh, advancement and upcoming new advancement in uh, the industry due to fourth industrial revolution. So in the last five years from 2015 and 2019, the, 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 the statistical report, which indicates that uh, the oil and gas extraction industry means the drilling industry, which is 2.5 uh, times higher than the construction industry and seven times higher than in general industry in terms of fatalities. Like the ratio of uh, accidents and deaths are more higher than the other industries which is which already has been seen through statistics in the uh, oil and gas uh, drilling industries which is the uh, I think the, the, the very uh, even in this advanced era and even in this uh, uh, in this particular domain that we are continuously focusing, improving, a lot of money we're spending, but there are some errors like such as human error or some technical errors which can affect the humans during working at the drilling sites. 
So according to Asian uh, petrol uh, gas statistical analysis from year 2015 to 2019, which indicates that the higher rate of critical injuries, life-threatening injuries are, uh, has, uh, has been saw, uh, saw and observed and reported uh, during drilling and extraction operations. So I think from these statistics, we can realize that how dangerous or difficult and challenging job is a drilling extraction uh, task and the job which the drilling crew used to perform. So we can uh, understand that how uh, threatening in terms of their safety and health it is. So firstly, uh, due to the rapid change in environment, as we know that we everyone uh, know this, that the, the environmental change and the, and the sudden and rapid change in the environment, which also cause us some uh, disasters in terms of pandemics, in terms of other uh, kind of uh, disasters, which are affected uh, most of us and globally, not uh, contextually, particularly in some nations, but globally people are affecting and therefore the countries and the governments of different countries are at uh, 1.0 so that how it can be more effectively uh, used internationally because if you want to uh, uh, make it public or want to uh, market this product internationally in terms of safety and health then we must need those safety standards which are internationally recognized so such virtual reality based uh, educational uh, aids and safety and health training aids uh, uh, which based on the new controlling factors and strategies to overcome such issues can be used for academic purpose as well. While we are teaching, while we are giving training to safety and health professionals, while we are arranging such opportunities or pre-service uh, activities prior to sending our workforce to the industry, so we must need such uh, uh, such kind some kind of uh, virtual reality based educational aid which can help them in performing the activity of drilling operations safely uh, at on and offshore drilling sites. So uh, to tackle such issues, uh, we have proposed and uh, uh, developed uh, in the initial initial stage. We have proposed and then now in the process of development. So we are developing. Uh, um, a, a HESCO expert uh, uh, 1.0 which can be used for uh, accident prevention which can be based on um, uh, three major parts identification development and evaluation phase so uh, there will be three major things the first thing that we come out with the most hazardous potential uh, areas activities tasks where the issues and concerns uh, we can find out then what are those uh, um, we can say the mitigation then identified that how we can control those uh, affected areas, the hazards which we identified in those areas. And then after uh, that particular area we identified and later on we come up with the uh, potential hazards associated with those operations and then come up with the controlling factor strategies. So these, this is the, the three ways per process. Like the first we have identified uh, what are the potential uh, areas of concerns and operations and come out with the potential hazards and later on we move towards the controlling factors and mitigate measures that how we can mitigate uh, those uh, uh, things and then based on that data and based on identified data which we have extracted from our uh, from our research activities later on i will also describe that how we can come up with the with, with approach and method we have used so then we move towards the development process where we develop a virtual reality based uh, educational aid in terms of safety and health at on and offshore drilling operation. But I would like to highlight here that uh, the previous version which we have created, we have, which we have designed, our team had worked and we come up with, which is already patented, which was, which was focusing for uh, three countries, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. But now in this, in this virtual reality version, we are focusing for Pakistan as a prototype based research that and later on we will move towards internationalization and commercialization then we will integrate other countries as well so, so it can be used to uh, other domains uh, so uh, after uh, as we know that once we develop something so we also need to evaluate its effectiveness user friendliness so uh, after the sec sec next and final step we evaluated we go towards the evaluation phase we will come up with how that system or that work can be further identified uh, so the next slide please 
So uh, the research target, uh, which I already identified uh, in, the, in the previous slide and also share with you, then we come up with some research objective, objectives to achieve uh, uh, during this uh, research uh, study. So the first objective which we, uh, which we have targeted is to recognize the risky operations or the potential activities, hazardous activities and operations associated with uh, drilling operations at Pakistani oil and gas drilling sites. So then we move towards identification of hazard controlling uh, uh, factors and measures related to drilling operation at on and offshore drilling sites at Pakistan. Uh, then uh, to develop the virtual reality based teaching and learning aid for accident prevention during drilling operation at the uh, drilling sites uh, at uh, the, our, our targeted country, Pakistan. So this, this is, as uh, I have indicated in the start, the identification phase. Our two objectives are related to the identification phase. Third objective, which is about the development of virtual reality based application, which is based on uh, the development uh, part that uh, the, in which we have developed and come up, come up with the uh, design and development of the product, which we already proposed. And in the fourth objective, we evaluate its effectiveness, with how effective in terms of its performance uh, towards utilizing in the teaching and learning activities for accident prevention. Because our target in this research was uh, that we can facilitate, we can give uh, some authentic, solid, and justified way of interactive way of uh, safety and health prevention and give it to our workforce in terms of uh, safety and health. And the drilling crew can also use, safety engineers can also use. So it's another way, interactive way uh, to uh, teach the workforce and the industry. So it's, it's, this research is more related to the industrial education. So. Uh, we have uh, tried uh, our best to cope up with all those uh, uh, strategies and issues and address all concerns issues as per the current need of uh, the industry. So uh, next uh, slide, please. Okay, so when we are talking about uh, the industrial uh, areas, we are talking about uh, such uh, um, like uh, issues which are globally and, and locally and globally are always in the consideration. So we must need to follow some key policy, policies and, and uh, which we, we used to target while designing our research objectives, while proposing some uh, product. So this research uh, project uh, uh, will target to contribute in the implementation and development of knowledge economy initiative uh, of the government of Pakistan. Like what we have, we did in our uh, uh, research research uh, study, and the and the product is already utilized by Edco Abu Dhabi, the one which I already discussed with you, which has expert 1.0. But this one is also 1.0, but having a feature of virtual reality. So virtual reality give the interactive uh, way, an experiential way, and vestibule way to workforce to get the knowledge and understanding in terms of. Uh, the actual scenario because as we know that in current uh, situation in the pandemic uh, it's very difficult to provide a, uh, a, a actual uh, the environment to the workforce so while training them while giving them training in terms of their experiences they can experience those things which which they will go to perform while going towards the onshore and offshore drilling sites while performing rig assembling operation, tipping operation, cementing and casing operation, helicopter operation, so many operations, marine operations at offshore site. So the, the thing is this, that we must need to come up with the agenda of the country also. We also need to address the key policies. So it will, it will give a, a very uh, concrete and solid justification to your research study. So we also have focus for the Pakistanis uh, agenda and policy towards the knowledge economy, which was about the training and to working towards the technical and vocational education and upskilling the workforce. So also it focused to promote the technical and vocational activities and experimental with the digital learning aspects among the industrial workforce. Because as we know that uh, according to uh, several research studies and also my student has conducted uh, research uh, study, in which we indicated that around 80% uh, students and uh, workers in the industry uh, from the labor, uh, the stage of the labor and level of the labor and uh, working at uh, performing such activities, 
are more towards uh, uh, virtual uh, visual learning they are more uh, the learning style is more towards experiential visual so they they love to learn in visualize through visualization so uh, that's why our target was to uh, come up with that product in which uh, no no not such skills or literacy is required in terms of uh, because we know that the labor is uh, in the industries are not that very much educated so we give them that actual scenario in terms of uh, interactive uh, like uh, scenario based or it interactive way of uh, visualizing uh, prior going towards the uh, actual side so because safety safety is one of the major concern in the industry then industries are mostly focusing towards the safety and health but as we know that the humans are involved machineries are involved advancements are advancements are there so it's 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 a really a big concern for all of us that uh, uh, we still need to upgrade ourselves we still need to work and need more for the uh, research okay please next slide Okay, so this is the some uh, previous research work uh, which uh, I have tried to accumulate in this, uh, this uh, in this slide. That uh, the previously used uh, uh, expert systems and uh, vegetable training uh, aids and the teaching and learning aids, safety and health prevention aids. So uh, uh, the first thing that uh, I, because it's, it's from our research or past work. So HESPO Expert 1.0, the country which worked on that was uh, Malaysia and uh, the sector which we have targeted, we worked with Petronas, we worked with uh, Saudi Aramco, we worked with uh, OGBCL. So the oil and gas uh, on and offshore was our target sector at the industry, then it was a software base. It was software based, I don't have such interactive uh, uh, aspects and such interactive uh, specifications of virtual reality. So then there is also some other uh, products uh, which are identified in previous, uh, previously uh, like uh, permit control and monitoring system uh, from UK and uh, it's also from oil and gas industry. Uh, there's, there's one uh, uh, like fire safety advisor 1.0A which is from United States of America, Ministry of Labor provide this one uh, for safety and health in the, in the different states. So it, 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 it is also one of the interactive part and now they are focusing towards coming up with the uh, new, uh, uh, you can say the um, uh, new uh, level or we give, they are bringing that to the next level. So there is some uh, uh, ingredients they integrated in terms of virtual reality, but it, it is a bit focusing uh, on, on the, just a fire, fire hazards uh, perspective don't covering all uh, concerns which are related to safety in oil and gas field. So that was uh, the previous work from the literature we have identified. So, so far there is no uh, safety and health drilling uh, virtual reality based application is available in the market, available in the industry, which can cover on and offshore operations, nine on offshore operations and seven onshore operations and having this updated information in terms of new mitigating measures in, in, in this current situation uh, in which we are uh, right now going through. So please, next slide. So this is for your understanding that the system processing flow that uh, I have targeted the two industry, uh, PPL, three industries, PPL, OGDCL, and we also have Mari Petroleum uh, from uh, Pakistan. So these are the industries in, the, in our country, in Pakistan, where uh, the extraction process, uh, process is always uh, like give priority to those industries while we talk about extraction and drilling. So uh, OGDCL is a national oil and gas industry and they are more focusing uh, towards the extraction and recently Mari Petroleum uh, in, in Pakistan uh, come up with a new, uh, you can say that they discover new reserves of oil in the country. So they are quite progressive. So we targeted uh, those three uh, industries, and uh, in this in the first phase uh, that was as I as I discussed uh, from from this um, uh, flow diagram, it's also depicted that uh, identification uh, of the hazards at on and offshore drilling sites. Then we move towards the hazard controlling factors and the fa hazards we have uh, distributed in terms of uh, chemical hazards, environmental hazards human hazards uh, and also we integrate in, uh, address the chemical hazards 
and then after the identification of this strategy, we come up with three major as we as we know that the that is the pyramid and hierarchy of controls where we come up with the engineering controls, administrative controls, and then PPE, personal protective equipment control. And later on, we developed the HESCO expert uh, in, in, in the integration of uh, the new uh, content of virtual reality and updated information. So, uh, and after uh, the development, because we must need to ensure that the uh, uh, working of that particular product and uh, its, its visibility and user friendliness, so we assess its effectiveness and uh, everything. So, uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is the uh, the framework of research uh, in which uh, we have uh, worked uh, and uh, like conducted this research. So the oil and gas drilling industries we have targeted and we specifically focused towards the oil and gas drilling operation uh, at on and offshore sites because onshore sites uh, I think those they don't know uh, about the on and offshore. So onshore sites while we are drilling at the land and offshore while we are drilling at the uh, that under the bed of the sea and going towards inside the sea, like we have offshore rigs and onshore rigs. So, uh, like uh, we focusing towards the drilling activities because we have so many one 128 drilling activities so far. We have covered uh, from on and offshore domains. So, because it's nine operations from offshore and eight, eight operation at onshore, but each uh, uh, operation have three to four activities which the drilling tool used to perform. So then the potential drilling hazards, we come up with those that what are the hazards associated with those operations and activities, then effective controls, uh, we identified through what if analysis, uh, which is uh, one of the best approach uh, and quick approach we normally consider in the industry for safety and health. And then we come up with the virtual reality based product based on the identification. Next slide, please. Okay, so this this was the methodology which we have adopted because this research is also having the major part of management and social sciences. So we use the sequential explanatory uh, research design approach, which is a mixed method research design in which uh, quantity, 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 uh, which starts from quantity and move towards uh, uh, quali qualitative research. So uh, so we used explanatory uh, research design in this research in which. We have targeted this quantitative AP respondents and workforce, safety and health uh, workers at drilling site, uh, AP respondents uh, for quantitative data collection, and uh, uh, three respondents for our semi structured interviews in terms of qualitative, qualitative research. So uh, uh, that was from on and offshore side. We have targeted equal respondents because we come up with a comparison at the end. So we need to focus towards the uh, comparative analysis. Uh, so we follow the Morgan table of uh, the sample size. So the virtual reality based application for the GUI for graphical user interface, so we focus towards the, the visual studio, which is very uh, user friendly and commonly used for GUI development. Then for the virtual reality uh, development, we go towards the Autodex 3D Max, that is a software for virtual reality, uh, which is also one of the factors for the uh, software, which is uh, for the uh, like virtual reality uh, graphical representations and development. Then for in inference engine for our database, we move towards the rule-based method and uh, sequential queries to align them with the, with the methods. So, uh, and after that, uh, like uh, for the knowledge base, uh, because database, uh, we also need an, a database from on and offshore. We divided into two clusters on and offshore, targeted one country. Industries were there in the separate cluster because we use sequential queries. So, MySQL was uh, used as a uh, for the knowledge base and database development. So this is the methodological part. So, next slide, please. Okay, so the most important and is interesting thing is. Uh, uh, the uh, industrial application because normally whenever we are, we are going to work to industry and uh, like uh, commercialize talking about and presenting about the commercialization of our product. So this slide they are very much interesting. Uh, so they consider that at, at, at one of the very interested website. Uh, uh, so, sorry website it's a pay, uh, presentation slide. So uh, the first thing that they focus for like uh, asking us that what are the uh, what you are offering uh, to uh, this uh, specific system? Okay, it's, it's providing all those aspects which in turn new 
novel in terms of uh, new information you are providing. But what other aspects? So the first uh, thing which this uh, uh, product is providing, uh, they are, as I told you, that is providing us, us uh, potential hazard identification of oil and gas drilling drilling sites, and also telling us the effective hazard controlling strategies and management. That it also give us a job safety analysis, job safety analysis uh, uh, rubrics and metrics as well, as per the identified data and information. So the uh, JSA is uh, those they are related to safety and health management or, or even the risk management. So the job safety analysis uh, as per the uh, current data and information integrated in the system, it also provide uh, for on and offshore uh, site, they can conduct the job safety analysis. Then uh, we can also come up with the characteristics of the hazards, what kind of the hazard it, it is in that particular domain, in particular activity, in particular operation. So it's also give them uh, for all 128 activities and uh, more than five, 500 uh, hazards which we have indicated, identified, and then characterization of their control, distributed them based on the priorities because we know that the first stage and the first step uh, which we consider as more effective it's engineering control. And then we move towards administrative control and then personal protective equipment. So they categorize them, uh, those controls, that uh, how effective and efficient they are with some color codings and distributed. And then HSC drilling through uh, training and educational purpose, the product can be used. So these are the applications which can uh, be offered through uh, this product and this uh, system. Next slide, please. Okay, so now towards the conclusion and the commercialization the potential of uh, this virtual reality based educational aid and safety and health aid uh, for the drilling industry for the oil and gas industry so uh, uh, this is uh, the new uh, teaching and learning aid uh, new in terms of uh, the data new in terms of the methodological development new in terms of uh, the targeted industries new in terms of uh, uh, we can say that uh, those areas which we have addressed and integrated with, with virtual reality uh, aspects and uh, the specification which were required. And we, uh, we uh, verified uh, this part so that either it's a new and novel because it's, it's, it's uh, with, when we're talking with the industry, so it's, it's a challenging part. We cannot fool them. We, we have to come up with the solid uh, justification that it, it is new. So through the literature review, we, we can easily justify it and uh, the industry also agreed on that. So uh, in, this is a new in terms of teaching and learning aid, having the, all the uh, aspects for teaching but to virtual reality, to digitalization in education, towards the education and uh, uh, technology 4.0. So, which is uh, uh, also based on identif identif identified uh, hazard controls and uh, effective measures uh, for oil and gas extraction and accident prevention. So, secondly, this will be a first virtual reality educational aid, which which compact data insertion and management application. We also give because when we give this to the industry, we also give them two and other packages. We also give them uh, the data insertion part, which we can which they, in which they can. Uh, uh, align that uh, and add the new information, new hazards, new uh, identif identified controls. So we also give them the data insertion and the knowledge base uh, uh, data structuring part as well in the terms of application. We also give them uh, the data management uh, and the further uh, if, if they want to add something uh, in terms of um, uh, like new, new uh, options, functions, functionalities in the system. So we also give them the open, open part, open source. So which covers seven onshore and nine offshore drilling operation uh, in terms of reducing uh, risk and hazards. And then uh, the third part uh, that this has for expert, uh, because we are, we are moving towards the advanced uh, version, will able to implement and execute at on and offshore drilling sites. So that, that have the capacity and capability to uh, the next level. Moreover, this virtual reality has for expert will be employed for conducting detailed risk assessment and job safety analysis uh, prior and uh, after performing drilling activities, uh, especially for the novice safety and health workforce or the new trainee uh, in that uh, area. So next slide, please. So, okay, next slide. 
okay thank you very much so i think i i uh, finished on time so if anyone have any questions so you can ask and over to miss uh, uh, santi thank you okay thank you so much prof musaba actually we also have uh, several questions regarding your keynote presentations i will share the questions to you just wait a minute oh wait let me share the screen. Okay, so have you uh, see my screen? Yes, no? yes, I, okay, I can. Okay. All right, so the first question is this one from uh, Dr. Yong Shushu or Shu from Curtin University, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dr. Muhammad. Do you foresee any change in safety training sector for post-COVID-19? Uh, very good question. And I think that is, uh, uh, yesterday we were also discussing in one panel discussion that what will be the next uh, stage and next level of training in industry, especially to talk about such safety and health activities and trainings where we need some experiential part as well. So uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I do agree and I think that uh, we now have to think and this product which I have shared with you, it's, it's, it's a uh, next level towards dealing in such situation in, in such pandemic. So uh, I think we have to realize this that uh, the, now we have to move towards vegetable pain. We have to live with this COVID-19, we don't know how long but we have to accept this reality and make such strategies towards the digitalization of learning towards as we are doing with online teaching and learning and currently we are in the virtual conference. So we have such alternatives. So like for going towards and progressing in terms of uh, our, our particular jobs and professions. So what we are going to uh, like propose to the industry currently while working uh, as educational technologists link with the different industries and we have come up with a framework so currently we are uh, working on a framework uh, in which we can help the industries uh, i think uh, later on in some day we can arrange such session to share that uh, the way and strategy and framework development uh, in this post covid situation so uh, i think the things will not same and we must have to focus for developing such gadgets, such applications, such features, such uh, applications with such features in which we can provide our workforce to learn and get the safety and health uh, like knowledge and information prior to going towards the um, um, industry. So uh, as we know that uh, also the industries are now focusing towards the digitalization as I also discussed and um, um, I think uh, Malaysia uh, is uh, one of the country which is also uh, very active in talking about education 4.0 and IR 4.0 and doing a very good job in terms of development and coming up with new research. So now currently we are also focusing towards this that how we can uh, utilize our workforce in terms of uh, because industrialization will later on uh, take over this, this, these industries. So um, my answer is this, that yes, we have uh, such uh, approaches and we are uh, making ourselves ready and coming up with such technologies, such uh, applications in which we can train our workforce to vegetable approaches. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Okay, because uh, maybe this is um, quite difficult <laughs> because Sometimes the safety training is should be practical. I mean, like we should uh, demonstrate, uh, right? <laughs> maybe that will be the biggest challenge in, although we use the VR, maybe in situations <laughs> will be different. Yeah. Yes. That's the challenge I think that, that yeah, we as the researchers should uh, face off. <laughs> true, true. Okay, and the next, next question is, how about the ICR from the company to communities around that place? Uh, from okay, so, from Tsumekan, Japan. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, like uh, talking about uh, ICR from the from company to com community uh, communities around the uh, places. Okay, the first thing that uh, uh, that is a different uh, part that 
like uh, icr like in our in our country in in pakistan we are going towards the different uh, uh, local and international standards so we need to have such reservation from our country and towards the integration in in in, in terms of uh, safety and health because uh, if i talk about the uh, oil and gas industries so they are uh, uh, looking and their way towards uh, uh, the safety and health concern in the industries are more towards the uh, like they align with the international standards as well so the communities as i as uh, uh, we have also focusing towards their concerns as well and around those places so i think Uh, the cons- cons- uh, the knowledge economy uh, policy and agenda which uh, we are focusing in in this research so we also taking the communities and all those stakeholders uh, which are uh, with us but here i think uh, there is no um, uh, concern with icr or company relevancy in terms of safety and health because this is a individual project and later on we can give it to the industry and they have such internal and external international policy and standards or own uh, frameworks so they can align later on thank you thank you so hopefully it will answer the questions but uh, dr hasni if you have more question regarding this maybe you can also contact dr uh, mustaba ya yeah, prof ya yeah. okay okay so the next questions is yeah from Dr. Joel Agacita from the Philippines, who set the safety standard in oil and gas industry. Okay, so for the safety standards, as I as I told you that we have different several bodies in terms of safety and health. Like uh, if we talk about international uh, safety standards, and we, because if it, as we have in, in the institutions, we're talking about uh, safety and health in the institution. So we also need to follow the government agenda, the, the national agenda of towards the safety and then we also have or our company or our institution also have uh, our own safety standards and agendas so the the, uh, the setting of those agendas rules and regulation is is, is regulated from the uh, international body and also the national body and later on uh, because for example we must have to focus in the line our uh, standard safety standards which we develop in the institution must be aligned with the international standards or the national standards so the the safety experts and the, and those governing bodies in terms of safety and health working with the human resource development working in the ministry of manpower so they have all those uh, we can say uh, the responsibility to coming up with the uh, safety standards in different countries i think it's is different from country to country and uh, industry to industry thank you yeah thank you So that's clear. It really uh, depends on the country's policy yeah. itself, right, Prof? Because it should combine bit, uh, combine between the international standard and also the national uh, regul regulacy itself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this one is the last questions, Prof. Yeah. So it's the need of the day, actually. Your your topics and the question is that can it be generalized to the other countries? From Dr. Bibi from Hazara University, Mansera, Pakistan. Okay. Yes, very good question, and that is uh, also uh, one of uh, the c- continuously asking questions from the audience as well. Like, if we talk about the generalization, uh, uh, because uh, as we know, uh, there is a difference uh, in the uh, in the environment. Because uh, if if uh, the last research which we have conducted, and we also commercialized the product which we, in which we targeted three different countries, like Saudi Arabia. is more uh, having two uh, seasons mostly uh, cold and uh, hot season Lock, uh, talk about malaysia it's a tropical country and having rain and hot season but about pakistan we have four seasons so uh, if we talk about environmental aspects and hazard so definitely we can not generalize if we generalize uh, those hazards and issues and concerns then the thing will, the, the product will not be unique and effective so uh, in that particular area in that particular domain uh, uh, as per my experience uh, we can generalize on some parts but we cannot generalize uh, in, in terms of uh, development of a product in terms of the approaches we can use the methodology we can use we can generalize uh, maybe we can also generalize in terms of technical technology related uh, hazards 
but uh, if we talk about uh, the environmental hazards if we talk about such some chemical hazards because environment and chemical while working at on offshore sites so the behavior of the chemicals we cannot ex uh, expect that what will happen and it is unpredictable so uh, generalization will be a bit uh, difficult in some aspect but yes it can be uh, like we can generalize but uh, later on the main thing is this uh, the part of your uniqueness of your product and uh, the the beauty of that product that it can be effectively used for accident prevention that will be then uh, the, the major concern so generalization is uh, because if we're targeting different countries every country have uh, their own uh, way of uh, dealing and their own environmental concerns thank you all right thank you so much uh, professor Gustavo Asad for being with us so later on if the there are some more questions from the participant of today conference we will email you also and also yes. uh, for when the recording is uploaded to the youtube we will also take you <laughs> we will also take you yes, yes. in order to uh, we can continue the discussion more in the research groups okay thank you so much for being uh, with us today professor uh, muhammad mustaba asad so really glad to have you so again once again um, see you again in the our nearest future programs <laughs> yeah thank you very much and uh, good luck uh, to all audience participants and rsf for doing wonderful job and uh, our support is always with you and have a nice day thank you thank you so much thank you all right so we are continued to the next agenda which is the online uh, presentation sessions but before that i would like to introduce our session chair for today conference is already being with us today uh, the session chair for today the conference is the dr suk fern yu uh, she is the head of the center for e-service entrepreneurship and also the marketing or CESEM, and also she is a deputy program coordinator of the MBA program from the Faculty of Business, Multimedia University, Malacca. Okay, and Dr. Suk Fernyo, she commenced her career as a lecturer with 18 years of teaching experience. She teaches marketing for bachelor degree programs as well as master degree. The supervises BBA, C supervises BBA, MBA, and PhD students. Dr. Suk Fern was the recipient for the most outstanding student awards PhD by the Graduate School of Business, University of Science Malaysia, and she was one of the nominees for the best thesis PhD under the social science category. So she is also active in research. She has secured international national and university grants both as the principal researchers and project members for several researches. She has published 21 international river conference papers, 43 journal articles, and two book chapters. And apart from her impressive list of published research work in international river journals, Dr. Suk Fern has also won many awards like three minutes thesis competitions, five-minute thesis competitions, excellent researcher award, and many more, and throughout her academic and career journey. And if also the participant wants to contact more with Dr. Suk Fern, also can be contacted through her email at yo.suk.fern at mnu.edu.my. Okay, Dr. Suk Fern, are you with me today? Yes, Dr. Santi. Ah, okay, great. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation and the uh, uh, brief uh, details uh, about myself. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'm okay. glad uh, and thank to Dr. Santi, Dr. Hendrati, uh, and Dr. Ani for the invitation. All right, it is a very great pleasure to be able to be here today with so many participants as well as presenters. So uh, without uh, further ado, can we start with our first presenter? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, after this, after this, so from the moment I will pass this uh, sessions all to Dr. Sukfen. So now the time is yours. So 
please you can start the online presentation session. Please, Dr. Uh, Thank All right, thanks, Dr. Santi. So uh, for today, you can see that we have five papers submitted for this conference. All right, so we will start with the first presenter. Uh, from my knowledge, one of the presenter is not here today, so we will only left with uh, four presenters. So therefore, we will be giving uh, 12 minutes for each uh, presenter to present their research work. Then after that, we will continue with a Q&A session from the attendees, all right, or the participants. So let me welcome, all right, the first presenter. All right, uh, our first presenter for today is uh, Dr. Rasmitalina, all right, and her topic for today is the impact of using instructional strategy based on the brain's natural learning systems for special needs students in the inclusive classroom. Wow, very interesting uh, topic. Eh? <laughs> A research where many of us uh, overlook. All right, so let's welcome her. Yeah, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Sure, sure. Okay. Oh, um, I'm glad to see you again, Miss Santi, and our moderator, Miss, what I call you, Miss Yu, Yu Sukfer? Yes, Ms. you can just address me as Sukfer will do. Oh, okay, Miss Sukfer. Okay, um, thank you uh, for RSF uh, to, and I can attend this international conference webinar. And today, I would like to present my research. The title is about the impact of using instructional strategy based on the brain's natural learning system for a special needs student in the inclusive classroom. So for your information that this, uh, my research, I was did it before the COVID-19. So <laughs> it's still um, processing to another data actually, but you know, because uh, there is a COVID-19, so uh, there is a little bit difficult to find the data because uh, in Indonesia, school uh, was closed and, you know, I have to find or figure out uh, the way what I can do for the collecting the data. Okay, for the next slide, please. I'm from Universitas Juanda. Maybe you heard about ever about the Universitas Juanda, it's more got from the West Java, Indonesia. So, um, in my research, the problem in instruction in inclusive classroom, maybe in this forum, uh, it's the basic is not from education. I would like you, uh, I would like to inform you what is the inclusive classroom. Inclusive classroom is a service in education in a school that a student with special need and with the general student, they learn together in the one classroom. So they can learn together, play together, and then uh, make something together each other. So it's inclusive classroom. Maybe in another country or other countries, it, um, different um, definition, but uh, at globally, inclusive uh, classroom is a service in education that mixed together between special needs student or SNS and the general student. So it's uh, the definition of inclusive classroom. So what is the problem uh, in inclusive classroom, particular to the teacher? In Indonesia, from my previous research, so before this research, I had uh, done a previous research about the inclusive classroom, particular to instruction. So many teachers in Indonesia face the problem with the interaction because the background of the teacher is not from the special teacher, something like that. So maybe uh, in another country like uh, background the teacher from the you know, like uh, segregation education, something like this. But in Indonesia, 
when teacher have to teach in the inclusive classroom, they have most they have more uh, competency about the what is the special needs student, and they have to because it of uh, their obligation to teach all of the student with all the characteristics with the weaknesses and the strong and the characteristic different characteristics so all teachers have more competency how to teach in the uh, inclusive classroom but this uh, make a cure the problem so most of teacher don't know how to create how to design the instructional in the inclusive classroom. Sometimes they make all the students is the same. Sometimes when the teacher face the autistic student, they don't know how to handle it. So sometimes they let or avoid the children. And sometimes they label the student with the naughty boy or naughty girl, something like that. It's because they don't know what is the characteristic of the student. They don't know how to teach finally. So in this research, I would like to uh, present about how to make the design, how to make or design instructional uh, effectively in the inclusive classroom uh, that can accommodate the needs of, of the student. So next, please. Uh, we, I mean, me and my college, me and my uh, college yeah, makes uh, and design uh, research about the how how we can make or design the instructional student, instructional strategies in inclusive classroom and this research you know uh, when I told you about the earlier of this presentation uh, actually this research is a very very short time because uh, there is a COVID-19 so I have to sometimes I have to stop this step and then have to continue another step, something like that. But uh, I hope that all the participants here can understand what I, I, I would like to present today. So uh, pr the purpose of my study, of my research, is to explore the opinion of the general teacher. General teacher is the teacher is uh, takes to the inclusive classroom so they have to teach all to all the students uh, both of the student general student or special needs students so we call them with general teachers and special teachers is in Indonesia is a uh, handle the special needs student they are particular to handle how to handle the special needs student when they a uh, tantrum something like that when they could then uh, follow the, 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 the subject and they have to motivate particular special needs students. So uh, in this study, we want to explore the opinion of the general about the impact of using the instructional strategies based on the brain's natural learning system for special and student inclusive classroom. So in this study, I uh, highlight to impact uh, from these instructional studies uh, to the special needs student. Okay, next. Okay, this is the framework about the brain's natural learning system. So we can find there is five learning system here. Uh, we call it uh, with the brain's natural learning system. This is from the uh, given, Barbara given, about the five learning system. Uh, there are emotional system, learning system, social learning system, cognitive um, system, physical learning system, and uh, the reflective learning system. For the emotional learning system, um, Teacher as a mentor, which create a conducive classroom climate and making teacher student with the good relationship in a warm relationship and build a, a good relationship with each other. So we can we can show what is the process in the learning 
uh, for the next slide, but uh, that is the definition, uh, definition about the emotional uh, learning system. How to build a patient, a student, when they have to learn each other, with, uh, when they have to learn with their friend, or uh, how to make a good relationship between teacher and student. Social learning system is collaboration and uh, vision to this, uh, of the student, placing student a part of a group with a focus of interaction, each other. Uh, interaction, collaboration, in learning community, working together in the making decision about a subject or a case. Okay, for the cognitive learning system, placing the student role uh, as teacher as a role of facilitator, while students um, explore knowledge, experience, problem solving, decision maker, something like that. And the cycle uh, action or a, a cycle learning uh, system involving all students in the physical activity, psychomotoric and tactile on topic uh, being studied. And the reflective learning place teacher to understand what is the learning style of the student, trend and the weaknesses of students through the learning process. So at the end of the learning, teacher make evaluation or reflection from all the students, what is what uh, their learning styles, how to uh, handle students with a special need when they have to uh, boost or increase their, their empathy, their, their uh, score of the subject, something like that. So integration of these five learning system is uh, uh, it's need for the teacher. So instruction in inclusive classroom to be good and effective. Okay, next slide. So um, this slide is described about the instructional strategies from the five learning system we implement uh, consists of five learning system in the instructional strategies. So we, we make or design in the early teaching in early teaching and then uh, main teaching and the end of the teaching. So there are three steps when a teacher have to teach all the students, as particular to special need in the inclusive classroom. Um, we can look at from this instructional strategy, the program or the activity to each of five learning system. We can look at what is the teacher have to do for the older student, particular to the special need, uh, when the early of the learning uh, activity, the, student, the teacher have to make, uh, how to make the motivation from the special need student to be high from the earlier than, than the, the actually or uh, Every day the student uh, do like uh, how to make motivation the autistic student when they have no motivation when they have to uh, when they have to learn something subject so uh, in the end at the early learning activity how to make the motivation how to design the special needs student to to know what they have to do in the early activity. And the main activity, they can, uh, you know, you can see in the social learning system, the teacher make a group to aid to all the students and the special needs students work together, discuss together, talking together and make a decision from the case from the, uh, the teacher when, when in the learning activity. And then sorry they to have to present mm, their- Sorry to interrupt, you have one more minute. Yes? You have okay. one minute. Okay, okay, okay. So this is instructional strategy that teachers have to do uh, using the brain's natural learning system. So the next slide. Okay, um, this participant in the, in the my, in my research, the participant and three general teachers and three special teacher includes uh, two inclusive school. 
and six special needs students with category slow learner, autistic, and uh, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactive disorder. And uh, we use classroom observation and interview to the to the teacher, and we use the thematic analysis. And the next slide, we found the three major themes. The next slide, yeah. We have, uh, we found three major things, uh, motivation to learn, learning experience, and social interaction, that uh, from the data. So we use the thematic analysis and we uh, found the three uh, major things. Okay, uh, conclusion. Oh, okay, instructional strategy. Okay, for the conclusion. Okay. Instructional strategies that we design based on the brain's natural learning system are effectively used in inclusive classroom. They are expected not only to be used in inclusive elementary school. This is, uh, I, I forget to inform you that we did the research in elementary school uh, inclusive levels, but for higher levels that uh, maybe for the future research we can do for the higher levels like in senior high school or maybe in higher education. Okay. Thank you. That's my presentation today. Thank you so much. It was a very informative uh, research. All right. I believe that, uh, like you mentioned, because of the pandemic, that's why you know there's some uh, hiccups yeah. in your research. Uh, now we have a question from Abdul Rahim. All right, mm -hmm. from Morocco. All right. His question is: uh, What should be taught to students with special education needs? Okay, okay. Um, where is the question? Okay, this is the question. How do you define the same use in your study? Yes. Ah, uh, you can address to this question first. Okay, uh, from Joe Mary Dormido. Okay. Um, the analytic data from the collecting data that we collect, uh, we make a coding, and we use NVivo. We, uh, we use NVivo and make coding and categories from the, the data from the inform, uh, interview and the observation and make coding categories and then we make and, and we relate to the theory and then uh, we find or figure out the things, something like that. So from the coding, we, we use NVivo to, uh, as the tool to help, to help us to make uh, uh in process to analyze the data so we make a coding and then we make a categories and relate to the theories and you know we find the theme uh, of the data analysis something like that all right we have another question from the uh, audience next slide Okay, so the next question, all right, the next question here is from the chat box, all right. Did you categorize your respondents, the students with SNS, for example, children with autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, and so on? Sorry? Did you categorize your respondents the children with S and S, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. children with autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, and so on. Actually, we didn't do categories uh, for the special needs student. Um, we only find where where is this inclusive school in the our place in our country uh, in our uh, local area where. It's a little bit uh, difficult to find the inclusive school actually. So uh, we did this uh, study or this research to implement the brain's natural learning system. Where is in our our region? Uh, where is this inclusive school? So we didn't make a category, but we only find where is the inclusive school and have a student with special need. We didn't make a special category. 
uh, all of the student uh, in the category with the special needs student in inclusive classroom or inclusive school that we can implement this this instructional strategy so maybe perhaps perhaps your future research you can yes. actually do a categorical study right yes. then you can see yes. the different outcome from that yes yes uh, the next question we have one more question yeah santi is it okay yeah only only one more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually we receive a lot yeah <laughs> all right so how do your teachers and learners adjust for classroom continuity amidst of the pandemic how do your teachers and learners adjust for classroom continuity amidst of the pandemic? Um, yeah, actually, this uh, the question is related to my other research, and it was processing about my research how to make a learning in the uh, pandemic. But globally, I have done a, a, a research about the pandemic uh, COVID-19, how to adjust the learning uh, when in the COVID-19. So, um, yeah, it's a difficult, it's difficult actually to make uh, involvement of the student or teacher because there is a limitation about the uh, internet, something like that. And you know, when the pandemic, the parents have uh, a big impact to the financial, and sometimes teachers don't have a motivation or maybe a minimal uh, infrastructure, infrastructure for the learning. So I think it should be collaboration between students, between teachers, between government, and between parents to make collaboration, a good collaboration to uh, learning. It's not about when we talk about the pandemic it's not about special needs student but when we talk about student a special needs student it's twice more complex complex uh, for the learning so I mean um, we have to make a good collaboration between government teacher student something like that all right thank you very much for very uh, interesting research I wish you all the best thank you You're welcome. all right thank you so much thank you Success so, for you all. So, without wasting any time, let me welcome, okay, uh, Dr. Galang Aji to present uh, the research on value chain analysis at Bank Sampa Bersinar in Bandung Regency as a competitive advantage strategy. Dr. Gala, are you there? Yes. So, good morning. Uh, my name is Galang Aji Pangestu from Telkom University, Indonesia. Uh, the honorable, the moderators, researchers, reviewers, participants, and all the audience. Today, I will be present about my paper, and the title is Value Chain Analysis at Bang Sampah Bersinar in Bang Horgensi as a Competitive Advantage Strategy. Next. So this is the general description of research object. Um, Bank Sampah Bersinar is located on Terusan Bojong Stoang Street, number 174A, Balai Endah Bandung Regency, overcome the problem of waste management and help improve the economic of the community through the transaction made. Next. So, um, this is our background. The pictures show that this name answered the range as the largest producer of plastic waste in the sea in the world this is certainly not an achievement to be proud. Um, where is fake Indonesian or my country occupies the number two position in the world as the largest producer of waste of plastic waste in the sea after China. With this information, it has been illustrated that the characteristic of Indonesian population are people who like practicality, not least in terms of disposing garbage. The information was quoted from mangobai.co.id 2019. Next. Next. As shown in the following table, the Bandung Regency um, Environmental Agency has not been able to handle the problem of capacity, transportation, and waste management to the fullest. 
As an example, he can be seen in the first row of the Bandung Regency Environmental Agency in 2009 that it, that it can only hold 60% of the total waste available. Meaning that there are still around 40% um, of waste that cannot be handled. Of course, this is a threat to the environment. Next. One of the government effort is overcoming the waste problem is uh, to establish and maximize the function of existing of West Bank. But until now, Bank Sampah Bersinar has not been able to fully attract the attention of public to participate in business process. Because until now, the, the, the West Bank is deemed not to have a good strategic planning in terms of waste management in the community. So it's important to analyze the value chain system in the business activities of, of Bank Sampah Bersinar as an indicator to produce a competitive advantage strategy. Next. So, uh, this is next. So this is the literature review that we use. They are operation management, supply chain management, uh, value chain. Next. Next. Um, value chain analysis, West Bank, um, value edit. Next. SWOT analysis and competitive advantage. Next. This is the framework. The picture explains the framework of truth that began to know Bank Sampah Bersinar competitive advantage strategy and then continue to identify the value chain and analyze the SWOT um, factor at Bank Sampah Bersinar. Then a qualitative analysis is carried out. The identification of the value chain and SWOT analysis will reveal value added in the business process of Bank Sampah Bersinar. Furthermore, research finding will be obtained that will be used to produce competitive advantage strategy for Bank Sampah Bersinar so that business process will be better and optimal than before. Next. In the research uh, object and subject, the writer chosen the several employees to be interviewed in deep, and they are Mr. John as a uh, manager, Mrs. Maya as accounting, and Mrs. Novia as an administrator. Next. Um, this study use qualitative data types that can be categorized into primarily data and secondary data. The primarily data will obtain directly by the authors um, of the selected research object, namely through interview and direct direct observation in field with employees or managers. Furthermore, in the study, secondary data was obtained through literature from the previous research and related institutions such as the Bandung Regency Environmental Agency, Bandung Regency Statistic Agency, and others. Next. Um, sampling in empirical research is defined as a process of determining of um, selecting a sample. In the qualitative method, a sample collecting technique um, that is more often used is purpose sampling and snowball sampling. Next. In this study, the author chosen data processing method in the form of qualitative analysis. Analysis with qualitative method explain visually uh, about the value chain, value aid, and SWOT analysis. The data analysis technique used in this study is triangulation method. In this triangulation method is interpreted as a data collection technique and the data analysis that com combines that various data collection techniques and search uh, that have been available. Next. Um, this is identification of uh, Bank Sampah Bersinar value chain actors. There is customer and then employees and in this in industry. Next. Um, the business scheme of Bank Sampah Bersinar is fairly simple. At the input stage, is the process of receiving of picking picking up garbage that has been collected by customer to be submitted to to the waste bank. At the process stage, namely the the management of waste that has been received from customer, garbage collecting will be divided into two types, namely waste that in accordance with the criteria and that is not in accordance with the criteria. At the output stage is the final process which uh, is the output of West Bank is already for sale. Next. For the the following is a picture of the current value chain of Bank Sampah Bersinar. The result of the study show that until now Bank Sampah Bersinar is still trying to improve their value chain. Next. Uh, SWOT, this is a SWOT analysis from Bank Sampah Bersinar. SWOT analysis is a method used to determine and uh, the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat obtained from uh, activities that has been running and plans to be implemented. This is a strength and weakness from analysis internal. Next. 
and this is um, opportunity and threats from analysis external. Next. So after conducting interview and observation with several employees of Bank Sampah Bersinar, it was it, it was found that is in general the problem were felt to hamper business process to develop and outperform their competitors. From the SWOT analysis, the main factor of problem are distance or location. Second is purchase price, and the third is public knowledge. Next. So from the result of the analysis and discussion, it is known that in Bank Sampah Bersinar, value chain scam errors that must be corrected are in the operation section. Next. Based on the result and discussion of the study, the author can draw conclusion to provide suggestion and improvement to overcome the problem faced Bank Sampah Bersinar at this time. Next. Bank Sampah Bersinar can improve value chain activities such as the, de at, as the design, service, and manufacturing process in its business activity. Because at this time, Bank Sampah Bersinar only conduct um, the process of sorting and cleaning up waste without carrying out further processing in, in order to provide value added to the waste to be resolved. Seen in the picture, is the optimization of the basic some technical problem from Dr. Galan's side? Hello. Dr. Galang. I think I think uh, he is yeah. Hello. He's not there. I think he's still an uh, mute. Wait. Hello. My voice. Yeah, yeah. Please, please speak louder, please. Sorry. Uh, next. Can you speak louder? We can't okay. hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Please proceed. Um, the author will provide a comparative picture from to illustrate models of value chain carried out Bank Sampah Bersinar in an effort to provide the highest value of waste that has been submitted by the customer. Based on the first model or in the app, picture illustration of the activity of Bank Sampah Bersinar in the process of creating value added in, in its business activity, namely waste process product output with a value added of 6.86%. There is an improvement that is explained in the picture from the second model illustration of an improvement in the activities of Bank Sampah Bersinar in the process of creating value add in, the, in, in, in its business activity, namely processing waste into product creation with value added of 74.36% um, or an increase of 67.5% um, from the previous activities chain model. Next. So, based on the result and discussion of this study that the author have um, described before, the conclusion can be drawn as follows. The first from the SWOT analysis that has been done, the result of the problem experience Bank Sampah Bersinar are distance or location, purchase and price, and public knowledge. The second, the development of the value chain carried out by the authors of, uh, to optimize the activities of Bank Sampah Bersinar is to improve the value chain activities and value added analysis. The third, uh, next, the improvement of value chain activities is carried out by providing additional activities in business process from the previous pattern, namely input, process, and output. This is done to provide the value added that is greater than uh, the waste obtained. The fourth, um, value added analysis is done by illustrating and comparing model number one with the old pattern of activities and model number two with the pattern of activities that have been changed. Then obtain value eight result is uh, model number one of 6.86% and model number two of 
in the last, this study can explain uh, and be referenced that the profits of additional activity in the value chain is able to produce the value added that is much greater in the business of Bank Sampah Bersinar. Next. From the result of study, uh, study conducted by the authors related to analyze of the value chain of manage of waste management at Bank Sampah Bersinar in Bandung Regency, suggestion can be given as a follow the first customer or public are expected to be able to increase participation in existing activities at Bank Sampah Bersinar and to implement better discipline in terms of waste sorting in order to facilitate business uh, process. The second, the government agency or related parties are expected to be able to provide support in the form of, so of socialization, training, and capital for the uh, principal actors uh, in the value chain of, this, uh, of Bank Sampah Bersinar. And the last, for the study are expected to be able um, to further observe and strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats that exist, as well as the calculation of value added in more detail as the development of products and service that can improve the performance of Bank Sampah Bersinar. Next. So that's all about my presentation. I'm so sorry, there are many mistakes of my presentation, and thank you so much. Thank you so much for a very uh, informative uh, presentation. All right, and also a very another interesting uh, research, I would say that most of us will not think about using SWOT analysis. So here, this is a question for you, Galang. Uh, why snowball sampling method was used in your research context? Please explain more from Dr. Fauzia, International Islamic University, Islamabad, Pakistan. Okay, thank you so much for the question. Um, uh... Why snowball sampling method? What is research context? Um, the first is sampling in empirical research is defined as a process of determining of selecting sample. In a qualitative method, a sample collecting technique that is more often used is purpose sampling and snowball sampling. Purpose sampling is defined as a technique for sampling data search through a particular consideration, such as the sample respondent considered to know best what the author expect or uh, our expect. Then, snowball sampling is defined as a data source sampling technique uh, where initially that amount is still small but gradu uh, gra gradually becomes large such as the example of the first respondent chosen by the probability method. Then the next respondent is obtained from the information or recommendation given by the first respondent. So I think uh, met, uh, snowball sampling I think is the best method that uh, what, uh, what we need to uh, finish uh, my paper. All right, thank you very much for your elaboration. Perhaps you can add some elaboration on how you select your sample in your write up because in your write up you are just explaining purposes sampling the definition, snowballing the definition, but you didn't actually explain how you select each of your respondents or your participants. You get my point? Okay, thank you. All right, another question. One more question before we proceed to the third presenter, yeah? Okay, uh, this question is from Dr. Robin, Philippines. How can these main problems, uh, namely distance or location, purchase price and uh, public knowledge faced by Bank Sampa Bersinar be solved to improve the value chain? Just now in your slide, you mentioned these three items distance or location, purchase price, and public knowledge. So how can these main problems faced by Bank Sampa Bersinar be solved to improve the value chain? Oh, okay. Um, when I get the main problem of Bank Sampa Bersinar, um, I will to um, make a deep interview and uh, observation in Bank Sampah Bersinar and I, I got the SWOT analysis when um, when I'm doing qualitative analysis. Uh, the question is, um, the business came of Bank Sampah Bersinar, uh, we think that very simple, that input stage is process for setting up the garbage that has been collected. But we think uh, as the authors, uh, it's, it's just about the distance or location after we make a uh, uh, interview with it, uh, interview deep with the employees in Bank Sampah Bersinar. So uh, with the questionnaire of we have to uh, give in the employees of Bank Sampah Bersinar. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much for your explanation. Perhaps in your future research, you may want to study using the same method, but you study on different uh, bank in the banking industry. Then you can see the difference between the uh, banking industry uh, value chain. All right. So thank you very much for your very uh, interesting uh, research. I wish you all the best. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we proceed to the uh, third presenter. All right, Dr. Trio Supriano, all right, going to present about learning and teaching model on COVID-19 era at UIN Maulana Malik Ibrahim Malang, Indonesia. Are you there, Dr. Trio? Okay, thank you very much, uh, moderator giving me a presentation this uh, my topic uh, learning and teaching model on COVID-19 era at uh, my campus at Win Maulana Malik Ibrahim Malang, Indonesia, of course. This, uh, in practice, the implementation of teaching and learning uh, by a uh, process that's uh, e-learning in uh, my campus uh, to uh, encouraging on achieving uh, critical thinking skill from students. In this era of the uh, 4.0 industry revolution, technology-based learning innovation, and uh, I think that's needed. Uh, revitalizing a learning system, new literacy movement, and uh, 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 the uh, digital uh, digital literacy, technological uh, literacy, human literacy become a uh, necessity as a bridge and develop of learning material are capable uh, of information uh, technology technology is in uh, is in educational has created uh, a hook influence one of uh, the learning model needs uh, by the learning model uh, for example uh, by uh, mod, uh, google meet uh, and the others that's next. Uh, I think that's uh, the introduction. My uh, research uh, for uh, fun. The first uh, for educator, uh, for educator, for teacher, for lecturer in my campus. Uh, the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic is a question, uh, question essential, adaptive, and transformative challenge. Uh, one for which uh, there is no uh, pre-configured uh, play by guides. Uh, process responses education leaders uh, like uh, teacher educator and uh, lecturer must uh, safely design respond uh, with a specific context in mind yeah, his mind her mind and their uh, student or uh, uh, lecturer as the pandemic runs its uh, courses uh, by uh, uh, learning Two factor that uh, causes the existence of critical thinking in uh, the student in higher education. Uh, in my campus, uh, there's, uh, the curriculum is uh, generally designed for all the uh, all campus uh, uh, understanding uh, of learning and teaching. That's uh, next. The third is. Uh, the problem is, uh, can critical thinking be trained to um, uh, our students or not? Sir? According to expert, uh, practicing uh, critical thinking be uh, done can be done uh, by questioning what is seen and heard from a student. After that, uh, process with asking why and how about it. And then uh, immediately accept the raw and coming information from students. Wherever it comes in the information of time must be digest properly and carefully before finally being concluded. Uh, therefore, practicing critical thinking from students also means uh, to behave uh, cautiously and not rush the, in dealing with problem. Uh, the fourth, uh, there are other views uh, to improve critical attitudes uh, from my uh, student or our student. According to research by Neuro Linguistic, a branch of science that study 
uh, about language and never uh, never never function uh, for example from uh, religion the other religion uh, how to uh, 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 collect it uh, with uh, the other uh, uh, the other uh, religion next i think this uh, for example taxonomy used uh, to classify curriculum and professional recruitment uh, resources uh, from uh, Pellegrino and Helton. There's uh, a uh, knowledge uh, about uh, literacy and communication skill from my uh, student. Active learning skill and knowledge of the discipline, ability to use evidence and assess uh, basis uh, the information and digital literacy that's uh, from a uh, teacher or lecturer and a uh, student in my campus. Next. This is my recent method, uh, like uh, the, the other uh, presenter, there's a qualitative, uh, qualitative approach with uh, uh, this, uh, the general, not uh, specific, but uh, uh, case study in uh, my campus. Yeah. The question focusing on the question of how, which is structured in the design of research uh, responsibility by always link, linking the logical relationship between question as collecting and analyzing research. Uh, next, finding in this, uh, in the learning process of my student, of course, uh, the teacher or lecturer has an important role uh, participate uh, with a character of student who are critical in dealing with various uh, situation a home face uh, home situation from student uh, home uh, situation uh, various situation from lecture there's a uh, that's a character the ability to think critical cannot be of time installed but must be familiarized uh, internalization and uh, well implement yeah. there are various ways that are built to critical thinking habits for student for my student especially uh, for example uh, junior high school and uh, uh, until uh, my uh, my uh, student in uh, higher islamic education who will face uh, the next uh, various critical thinking itself according that's uh, important to uh, the uh, student uh, in higher uh, higher uh, education. It is important to teacher lecture to provide learn techniques uh, techniques for student whose focal point is to thinking skill. The way there will uh, be various in fact that can be of time as have to increase stick to student minds longer. There's so as achieve uh, optimal learning goal, student will be trying to have a solve problem. As a critical thinking, uh, where student uh, in higher education have uh, to solve problem in the class, in the uh, literacy, and the uh, the other material in his uh, courses. The activity of each child uh, to optimize uh, this critical attitude in indeed uh, different. Uh, by, because uh, the student have characterized uh, characterize, uh, um, yeah, the other students. Okay, thanks. Uh, student must uh, continue to try to find the latest uh, sources uh, of information to be used in consideration. Yeah. In addition, student must uh, be also uh, customized uh, to have an uh, open attitude toward uh, the other uh, student and uh, the other uh, lecturer or the other educator and teacher. After having the ability to think critical, the teacher have the next important plan. For example, uh, to uh, how to uh, make uh, attitude uh, uh, to uh, feeling of others from the student. Different ways of uh, thinking and uh, perhaps uh, feeling there's a difference how to internalize uh, the feeling uh, from the uh, critical thinking uh, the student okay next uh, this is a model uh, a learning in uh, my campus uh, i think that's a uh, uh, 
uh, material that's a material have characterized for example uh, material uh, in uh, information that's a uh, that's uh, don't have uh, make uh, critical thinking but uh, information that have to make a uh, uh, information only uh, just only uh, information but uh, the problem how to uh, make uh, solve the problem that's uh, uh, implication from the information that's the exam how I evaluate how the uh, discussion to discuss uh, uh, between a student and a lecturer and uh, teacher and uh, educator okay next there's a, a address from uh, the uh, learning in my campus yes. there's a, uh, for example and tutorial uh, learning uh, for tutorial for student tutorial for teacher or lecture next i think that's a uh, okay uh, there's a a learning model can encourage students uh, to critical thinking about subject matter. Uh, for example, uh, the subject matter, there's uh, differences uh, to information, uh, uh, but to uh, solve problem, there's a uh, different uh, because the combination strategies in more recommended uh, because it uh, can achieve uh, various aspects of the critical thinking. Uh, it, uh, teaching technology that uh, applies the uh, uh, combination of uh, various component. It's a combination of various existing uh, strategies such as uh, a learning model. Educator Excuse me, uh, you have one more minute to present. Yes. Yeah, critical thinking in this process of learning uh, in my campus, uh, we have a uh, history that can be accomplished if all the fact uh, about historical event and can be found by means of the teacher or the lecturer or and student having complete sources and material okay thank you very much uh, okay uh, thank you so much I believe that uh, e-learning is the uh, in thing now due to the uh, COVID-19, right? It's a, another uh, area of study. Uh, let's look at the question. Will you propose the e-learning model for developing nations, especially in Africa, where there seems to be an underfunding of the education sector? And what would you propose for them should the e-learning not be feasible? From Prince Mensa. Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this question is uh, very uh, important, and, and I think that's uh, very serious <laughs> to uh, to make a <laughs> research. <laughs> but uh, the research is uh, the first research, not uh, the the deep uh, the deep research. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I have uh, to uh, describe uh, in uh, a learning model only uh, how to. Uh, uh, Collected uh, uh, by uh, and uh, between uh, the lecture and uh, communication between uh, the uh, lecture and students in my campus. Uh, this is a, a more a model, a model a learning model only. Yeah. This, uh, for example, this uh, the first only not a diff <laughs> to my research uh, to uh, uh, how to uh, evaluate and how uh, uh, that's. Uh, uh, competency, uh, competence uh, uh, from my student. How that uh, can critical thinking? That's uh, not only that's. Uh, I uh, I describe uh, my first only uh, first uh, research. This is uh, the first research to describe uh, general, not uh, the deep uh, research. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, one more question before we proceed to the next presenter. Uh, basically, this question is from Zoran, uh, Philippines. How do we ensure that quality learning is delivered during e-learning? Are there criteria that you can share? Oh, yes. Okay. That, that's uh, in my data. That's, uh, uh, don't, uh, I, I, uh, I don't uh, make uh, data uh, in this uh, conference and this uh, presentation, but uh, the the data is uh, 
I have, but uh, this uh, description, uh, my uh, communication uh, only uh, between uh, teacher, lecture and uh, student only. Learning model by, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, Google, uh, uh, Google uh, with uh, media Google, there's a uh, webinar, there's uh, the other uh, media, medium and uh, there's, uh, I think uh, you, you all are presenter and uh, ask from the uh, the uh, model learning and teaching there's uh, various uh, there's uh, more more very very more there's uh, yeah all right thank you so much uh, i hope that your university is uh, fully utilizing the e-learning model right yes. Yes. for the uh, you know for the classes okay thank, thank you. you so much thank you. wishing you all the best in your future research so now we go to the last presenter, all right? So last presenter is uh, Dr. Sal Sabila, all right? Her topic is on the uh, relationship between employee motivation and employee performance in BRP husband. So can we have her on board? Yes. All right, it's all yours now. Can we start? Sure. Okay. Um, first of all, good morning, everyone. Let me introduce myself before we go too far. My name is Anabila Maharani. I'm from Bandung, Bandung Institute of Technology, and I'm here today to talk about my research, which is assessing the relationship between employee motivation and employee performance in BPR Petaspen. Next. This is the outline for today's presentation. Next. And we'll begin with research background. Next. Did you know that retirees are become an interesting market for banks? There is even a say that as long as civil cell funds still exist, there is a possibility for banks to sustain. Why? Because banks can use the opportunity to cycle the pension credit. Next. Yes. Talking about retiree, most of us know that there is one state-owned enterprise in Indonesia has the authority to take care of it named Taspen. But have you ever wondered who has become the responsible one for Taspen's employee's pension plan? when they got retired? Well, actually they have the beta span or the pension karyawan task span. So where is their position based on task span in corporate diagram? Here on the red row is it. They actually have to subsidy the company and I will discuss more to be the beta span as the related topics with retirees. Next. The company officially operated on January 1990. They, then they growing fast until has seven branches over Jakarta and West Java in Indonesia. Next. But what is Rural Bank and what is their advantage? Well, Rural Bank, Rural Bank is a bank that is basically the same as commercial bank, but they does not collecting funds from the public in the form of time deposits, loans, and credits. Rural Bank play an increasingly important role in the growth of rural areas. Rural Bank or BPR typically have monopoly control. Next. If they had advantage, so they will also a challenge that surround them. The challenge faced by Royal Bank in general is three things. The first is fintech hype. The second is sharing the pie of retirees with commercial bank. And the third, which is the interesting part, is the bank itself must be healthy. Next. Well, uh, researchers found a fact in the BBR Petaspen. A researcher used to approach to analyze the data gathered. The left yellow box is gathered from company's data analysis, while the right yellow box is collected from conducting interview with BBR Repetas Pen employees. From all those problems, the core is the one with red arrow pointed. Thus, assessing employee motiv motivation is crucial because a study even say that improper employee motivation program could damage employee performance. Next. Hence, researchers have two questions and objectives to be done in this research. The first one is, what is the factor of motivation, employee motivation that has a significant influence on employee performance? And how did those aspects of employee motivation affect employee performance? Which scope and limitation applied? Next. We'll move to chapter two. Next. The lit uh, literature review use are divided into four points, and we will first discuss about motivation. Next. Well, for motivation, it came from the Latin word movere, meaning to move, which contextually means that it is what moves one to participate in an activity and controls the desire to continue the activity. Next. 
Ergo, I'll refer motivation theory is used in this research because I'll refer is try to attempt Maslow needs, which is the very famous need in theory needs in the motivation theory. And I'll refer propose that his theory is not hierarchically. It is simultaneously. And I'll refer simplify the needs of Maslow into three core needs points. The first is existent needs, which includes food, water, air, clothing, and safety needs. The second is related to needs, which is the needs to build significant others or to build relationship with family, uh, friends, co-workers, and employers. And the last is growth needs, which is the desires to be creative, productive, and to complete meaningful tasks. Next. While well, for performance, performance involves employee behavior related to achievement of organizational goals or targets. Next. So how is the correlation between employee motivation and employee performance? Many studies mentioned already proved that there is a positive relationship between both variable. Uh, the researcher who tried to prove the theory is on the screen. Next. Hence, researchers try to prove the theory with the object is paper span in 2020. The research framework are shown in the screen. Next. We will move to the research method. Next. This is the research design applied in the research. Next. And the question will be applied to two model assessment, which will be explained in the next slide for 63 respondents, which is the entire population for all branch of this. No sampling and all are analyzed using SPSS to run the multiple linear regression. But before passing through multiple linear regression, the data, the, the data must be valid and reliable and pass the classical assumption test. Next. This is what a researcher means, a researcher used to models. The first model combined ARG original theory for the variable motivation, plus Arnold and Kufas journal for variable performance, and all item variable questionnaire are assessed by 63 respondents individually, while for the second model of questionnaire use ARG original theory, the same as model first, but the only different part is on the variable performance because for the variable for performance is assessed by the human resource of BPR Reveta Span itself. Next. Okay, we will move to the research results. Next. Uh, after passing the validity and reliability test, which is a sum pass, and classical assumption also a sum pass, we will discuss more about uh, multiple linear regression results. Next. Well, the coefficient, the, uh, the coefficient of determination R square here is 46%, which means that variable motivation could explain employee performance as big as 46%. Next. Uh, the population use does not prove a significant influence on existence and growth needs, but shows a significant effect on related needs. The significant values below 5% because researchers use 65 percent confidence interval is only belong to related to needs so the hypothesis accepted is only for hypothesis two next this is how each factor of the variable of motivational needs affect employee performance partially as could be seen in the screen next well for the model two result after passing validity and reliability test which is a sum pass and classical assumption which also a sum Pass. We will move to multiple linear regression, we, where, uh, which will be discussed in the next slide. Next, the value of R square here is thirty-four point seven percent, which means that the variable motivation could explain employee performance as big as thirty-four point seven percent. Next, the population use does not prove a significant influence on existence and growth needs, but show a significant effect on related to needs. This is actually the same as model first. And two, uh, the hypothesis accepted only for hypothesis two. Next. So how does each factor of variable of motivational needs affect employee performance partially as could be seen in the screen. This is actually the same as the model first because the biggest contribution is came from related to needs. Next. So based on the explanation from model first and model second, we can conclude that related to needs give a significant effect towards employee performance in both models. This is aligned with Arnold and Boshoff 
in their research, the number one rank motivation factor is recognition from manager and others. It is necessary to prioritize the use employees closeness to encourage them to work. Next. Well, we arrive to conclusion and recommendation. Next. For conclusion, using multiple linear regression, researchers have identified and analyzed both independent and dependent variables mentioned. We can conclude that if employers focus on the related needs or use it as a best to collaborate with other needs, the motivation of employees to perform best may increase. Next. The first is recommendation for BPRB task plan. BPRB task plan first could make a gathering or an open discussion feedback to maintain the satisfaction of these needs. The second is use give as a substitute for direct monetary incentive and point the selected employees to be responsible for evaluating and rewarding the peers. And the last is invite a well-known trainer which proposed by the employees because they could eventually discuss it more, uh, discuss it before they propose to the manager. Next. For the recommendation for future research, the work environment such as leadership style or employee engagement could therefore play a key role in conducting future research. This is also supported by the fact that employee motivation only explains employee performance as big as 34.7% up to 46%. Hence, the future research expectantly could add other variables to describe the rest of it. Thank you for the time, and I will return it back to the all right, thank you so much for your presentation. All right, we can go to the next question. Let's look at the question. All right. Why the existence and growth have no significant effect on employee engagement in BPR custom? Well, from uh, Basim uh, Oman, from Oman. Okay. Uh, first, I will correct it. Actually, uh, not to employee engagement, but to employee performance. Um, I will answer it based on my assumption because I can, uh, I can answer it based on numbers, but I actually have internship in that company. Um, my assumption is because they use performance-based pay as to trigger for the employees to work. And maybe this is also give effect to the existing needs because they, uh, because when they know that they will get higher pay, they also know that there is a higher responsibility. And higher, higher responsibility also lead to higher stress. This is actually uh, discussed in some paper, uh, I forgot. Uh, Harvard Business Review is I'm not mistaken and for the growth needs actually uh, it is have significant uh, effect but because researcher use six uh, use 90 percent confidence interval thus the hypothesis the hypothesis for the growth needs is not uh, accepted but for um, for my assumption why it is not significant for the graph need because actually we better with Taspen is sub, a subsidiary company for Taspen and based on my internship experience there is so many um, uh, what is I will talk it um, uh, Titipan what is name called <laughs> Through, uh, thus, uh, actually the growth need is also uh, what, very, very, uh, uh, very from each employee. Uh, thus, it also make it more difficult to make it significant. I think, but yeah, that's my opinion. Thank you so much for your explanation. Uh, from what I gather from the chat box, uh, one main question is uh, most of the uh, participants is asking, uh, what theories? or theoretical framework is your study based on? What? What theories or the theoretical framework is your study based on? You have the three IV to one DV, right? Yeah. You have three hypotheses. So based on which theory that you develop this framework? Um, actually, I have, um, I have previous research, but uh, I'm not mentioning it in the presentation. 
Um, how can I open my document first? <laughs> Uh, I will answer it. Uh, I actually try to prove the previous research used by Boots et al. in eh, uh, my Vita et al. in 2017 in her research, and also Theodora in 2015 in her research on work motivation and employee performance, and Chen 2018 who conduct uh, study to consider how organizational performance would be if existing relationship and growth needs are met with gathered information. Uh, actually, uh, this is the original theory for, from R.G. Oliver theory, but, but um, for the variable item use, I also use all of them, but I eliminate uh, I am I eliminate some which is not required the validity and reliability test. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you to all the uh, four presenters for your wonderful uh, presentation and as well as your research. All right, it was something different from the rest of the uh, studies that have attended before this. So I pass it back to Dr. Santin before I wrap up the whole session. Yeah, you can wrap up it first. I can wrap up first. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. First of all, the purpose of the uh, conference or this particular conference, even though it's uh, done virtually, is for us to learn from each other. All right. Uh, learning is a thing where it never stops. All right. Even though you have already graduated with uh, your master, your PhD, or even though you're already a professor, learning is a continuous uh, process. All right. Because we have to learn from each other. Uh, always bear in mind that research is a very subjective thing. Therefore, uh, we have to learn from each of the participants in this conference. Perhaps each of you can change your email address or you know, you add each other in WhatsApp so that you can have future uh, collaboration. I will call it international collaboration in your research because what you are, the research that you are doing in your country all right, might be applicable in other countries. All right, so take every uh, comments or every questions, all right, given in the chat group, or later on, I believe that the organizer will post all these questions in their Facebook group. Take all these comments positively, all right, try to address them and improve in your uh, paper right up. I believe that you have submitted your full paper, but you can try to improve based on the comment so that your paper can be published in a higher or better journal, all right? And also take all this comment to improve for future research. You can use that comment, you know, implement it for your future research and make it a better uh, study as well, all right? So I will encourage all of you to always uh, attend, all right, or participate in conferences because you will learn a lot from the conference, all right? So for those who are doing their studies, whether it's master or PhD, all right, I wish you all the best. Always remember, you have to enjoy your journey. Then only you will excel. All right, so that's all from me, Dr. Santi. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Sukhvern. So it's really glad to have you as our session chair for today's conferences. Thank you so much. See you again in the future. <laughs> Sure, sure, in sure. In the next program, of course. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so let's continue to our next agenda, which is the participant testimonial. This, this section is uh, dedicated is for all of us, both for the presenters and also the attendee to share live their experience and their feeling after joining the scientific forum or this international conference in order to encourage others to join also the scientific forums. Okay, so we get representative from the presenters and also the audience or the attendee. So for the presenter, we would like to invite Dr. Rasmi Tadila. Can you hear me? Hello? 
Dr. Asmi Tadila. Okay, so if Dr. Asmi Tadila is cannot uh, answer it, okay, so I'll go to. Okay, to uh, uh, Miss Salsadila, Miss Salsadila, because usually uh, still stand by ya, because the last presenters. Hello. Yeah, Miss Salsadila. Hello. Yeah, hello. So can you share to all of us your experience and your feeling about after this uh, joining this virtual conference to all of us? Okay, please. Uh, Miss Santi, I think it's uh, Dr. Rasmita Dila available. Oh, oh Dr. Okay, Dr. Rasmita Dila, back to you. <laughs> Because previously we, we cannot hear your voice. Okay, please share your experience and feeling about this conference. This is the most problem in the e-learning. You know, internet is very, very low, <laughs> oh, bad signal. <laughs> so, uh, I'm very thank you about this conference. It's very very uh, give me a beneficial for the for the future research i'm thank you to miss sofra i absolutely agree for your statement for the last next month that this conference is very very beneficial for uh, all of the uh, participant particular for myself uh, i will do i'm going to do the next or the future research uh, relate to my topic and i'm a little bit Um, um, I, I, I couldn't imagine that there are uh, some participants from the educational, educational field. So I'm very happy to hear and look at the comment from the participant, particular from the educational field. So uh, thank you for RSF, for all the participants, give me a, a, a high motivation to do uh, the future research. Thank you. Success for all you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rasmi Tadila. Good luck for your future research and career, of course. So please keep in touch with us. <laughs> okay, so next, I would yeah, like, so uh, we go to, yeah, thank you. So we would like also to invite to the audience and also the attendee because the audience and also the attendee coming from various uh, country, from 27 countries. So that's why I would like to ask, uh, Hopefully, uh, uh, he or she is already standby. I would like to ask Dr. Robin, Dr. Robin pa Parojeno from Diabastrate High School of the Philippines. Yes, Dr. hello. Robin. Yes, okay, hello. Okay, Dr. Robin. Yeah, so <laughs> you can share your experience and your feeling after joining this conference, please. Okay, so first of all, congratulations to all the presenters and especially to all the facilitators, moderator of the of this event. So it is my first time to attend this international virtual conference. And with regards to the presentation, I was so amazed because all the presenters were very good in presenting their topic. And I am also thankful to Dr. Yu Sok Fern. You're welcome. For all, yes, for all the encouragement given to our dear representatives because i guess i felt the emotion no during the presentation because that was also my experience before when i presented my paper but once again before this presentation i i read all their presentation last night for me to be prepared and also for me to be ready with regards with the questions And most especially to all the participants, um, let us be reflected with the message from Dr. Yoshok Fern that during the presentation, all the comments, even though that there are some negative, we will take it positive because this, these are the things that we can use this for our development. We should not take this as negative, but instead we will use this as our encouragement to do our journey and let us not be discouraged but to be encouraged okay thank you okay thank you so much dr robin glad to have you here with us today and the last one the last one i would like also to give this opportunity to our friends dr linus adama from i federal university dufu alek ebony state nigeria 
Dr. Linus, are you there? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm here. Okay, please, Dr. Linus, you can share your experience and your feeling after joining this uh, mass conference and also encourage others to join also the scientific forums. Yeah. Dr. Linus, are you ready? Hello? 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 If Dr. Linus is not ready yet, I think previously. Hello? Okay. Because in this opportunity, we would like also to give uh, the, the experience in sharing life to the others, not only to one or two uh, specific country, but also to our scholars from other country. Okay, Dr. Linus, if you are, um, have, I think maybe the, the audio is uh, having some. Please. Um, hello? Can you hear me? Ah, yeah, 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 Hello? finally. Yes, yes, please. Oh, oh okay, that is okay. uh, fantastic. I really want to, you know, congratulate, uh, you know, the organizers of this very wonderful conference. It is quite uh, amazing. It is fantastic. In fact, I can't wait for us to have another one very soon. Because here in Nigeria, uh, in fact, all my colleagues, I think all of them are on board for this very, very conference. In fact, I, I don't, in fact, I'm speechless. I'm speechless because I've seen so many contributions, so many wonderful paper presentations. Oh, the, I, 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 I gave a salute to the, to the, to the chairman of this, uh, you know, very, very conference. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, maybe he's far from the. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Doctor Linus. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. But maybe there are some uh, uh, instability of the connection of the internet, but. We also uh, already get your point regarding your uh, feeling after joining these conferences. Okay. Okay, so thank you. We will continue to the last. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think we can continue to the last session. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Linus, Linus for uh, being with us as the representative of our friends and our scholars from the Nigeria. So it's been also uh, a good opportunity for all of us uh, to learn from each other. So, okay, the last one, the, the next slide, please. Yes, we are coming to the closing, but this is very important to all of us, especially for the presenters. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, so regarding the, the publications of your conference papers, so you can also check your uh, conference paper already published in, uh, in RSF Press with, with those links, with proceeding.rsfpress.com slash M-E-S-S, and then um, the, the OI numbers and also the Google Scholar Index it will be released at maximum at 10, uh, uh, 10 days after the, after these conferences. So please make sure to check again at the rsfpress.com. And then we also offering more uh, publication opportunity for the presenters who wants to publish the papers uh, in the journals, in the journals. 
because we have, especially for this conference, the variance is uh, you, uh, the author, the, the author or the presenter can get two options, can get two options. The first one is the conference paper that will publish by the RSF Press, with, which has the DOI number and also index it in a Google Scholar. And then if the author and also the presenters wants to go for the journal publications, they need to make a revisions or they need to submit their extended paper of the conference of the previous conference paper because in order to avoid the self plagiarism so the presenters need to do revision at least 80 percent of the conference paper that already submitted in order to get the journal uh, journal publications and the full paper or the extended uh, full paper for journal publications should be received by the committee on a day plus 14 days. This is the 14 days working days. So you have a bonus like the Saturday and Sunday. We are not include that. So the, the, the times will be longer for you to make a revision or to extend your conference paper into the journal uh, paper. And then after that, there will be another scientific uh, review process again for your uh, journal papers. And then after that, we will inform you uh, the journal recommendation that's suitable with your uh, papers. And then after that, after we recommend, you can select which uh, journal that you want to publish your extended papers one. And then you can sign up, uh, you can sign the consent letter. And then uh, after that, all the corresponding will go to the author and also the, the journal and, and, and the editor itself. Okay, so please make sure if you want to proceed to the journal publication, please make sure that you uh, meet the timeline requirement as mentioned also in the conference website. Okay, next please. Yeah, and this is the last one. So don't worry and don't feel discouraged or demotivated if your question uh, are not answered yet by the presenter of today conferences because we will also share and we will also compile all your questions and will be will be emailed to the respected uh, author or or presenter, and then the presenter also can uh, answer it directly through the email, and we we will forward it. And moreover, we can continue the discussions in our Facebook group, which is the Global Research Ecosystem Network. So you can also join there as a members, and then we can continue our discussion there. So. So don't worry that we already taking note all your questions to the all presenters and it will be answered by the by the presenter itself and we will inform you again. And then this is the last program and this is the new release programs that RSF just launched regarding the research enhancement programs. So RSF uh, held the uh, RSF Research Academy, which is uh, the, the program uh, that is offering the comprehensive a research curriculum that will stimulate and also enhance your basic skill in terms of the research. And this curriculum is, uh, is, 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 is already programmed with a total 30 hours. And also you can also get the recording, you can also get the materials. And the most important things is there are six uh, globally recognized experts that will share their knowledge, their best expertise in terms of the research in conducting the research, whether it is the quantitative, the qualitative, and etc., including also how to find the novelty and how to make your paper uh, interesting and, 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 and more attractive in the, in, the, in, the, in the editor's perspective and so on. And these programs is, will be, uh, the registrations will open uh, from July until next uh, 5th August because the program will start in early August. So please make sure you registered before the 5th August in order to, to save your seat because this is also the limited ones because we want to have the, the audience or, or, or the participants of this program is really, really uh, intense and also keeping in touch also we can communicate with the expert with the, the, with the six experts that will share their best practice in terms of the research. So please, uh, you can also see this announcement also in the, in the Facebook of the Research Synergy Foundations. Okay, so the last, so please don't forget to follow our social media.
and our um, our social media, YouTube, Instagrams, and also check the update of the schedule of the international conference of our upcoming international conference in our website researchsynergy.org. So you can also submit your paper there as presenters. So again, uh, on behalf of the International Conference on Management Education and Social uh, Science or MESS Committee, I would like to say thank you. And thank you so much uh, once again to your uh, participations and to your active discussions and to your active feedback also to all of the presenters and to the presenters also thank you for sharing the knowledge. And don't forget the timeline if you want to publish to the journals, you should pay attention closely to the timeline of the of the uh, of the publications okay thank you thank you so much for the uh, professor uh, muhammad mustaba asad as our keynote speaker today and also dr sukfern as our session chair today thank you so much it's really glad to have you here and then hopefully we can see you again in our nearest programs and don't yeah. forget to keep in touch with us okay thank yeah. you so much all right bye bye, thank you. bye.